So, well, I can tell you the way we start, and that is we prepare a figure set. Even before we've gotten all the data, the student or postdoc will present that at group meeting. If there's some data missing, they'll present a sketch of that in place of a figure that they're hoping to acquire. That lets us bat around, well, what are the control experiments we should do? What's missing? What do we need to do to bring the work to completion? And also that lays out the story. It's almost like in a TV show or movie, a storyboard. That's what your paper is when someone flips through the pages. They're looking at the figures, and those should be able to tell the whole story of the article. Uh, that feedback, I think, helps inform the, the sort of last run of experiments. We, we like to think of writing a paper as like a children's novel. So I imagine, although I've never written a children's book, I imagine it starts with the illustrations. So that's what we do. We work on the pictures first. Because I always tell my students it's very important that their paper be written with the clarity such that if a group of illiterate people were to look at your paper, they would still understand it. And part of the reason there is because people don't have time. My, my personal writing process is actually quite old-fashioned. I like to storyboard my paper, I like to look at the data, produce the figures, and try to convince myself and my colleagues and my co-workers that actually that the science or the evidence that we're showing answers the question or responds to the hypothesis that we're proposing. So we then move on to, to prepare the paper as a series of bullets which expand from the, from the figures and the data. And only then do we look at the narrative and make sure that the argument and the scientific thrust of the paper is appropriate. 